The income increase of China's young people cannot keep up with the rising housing prices, particularly for those of us who were born in 1980s. What can the government do to solve this problem? Great question. Homes that are affordable for you and young people like you is indeed a key concern for the economy and socially as well. In fact, the government in recent years has put a lot of emphasis in providing new social housing, homes, flats, apartments, houses that you and young people like you can afford. But equally important and more fundamentally, many of the problems that are underlying this constant pressure in the housing market need also be addressed. For example, in the financial sector, currently households can mainly put their savings into bank deposits or into housing. If we create new ways of saving, new products, even if we open the capital account so that some of the savings can go abroad, we will reduce this pressure for ever rising house prices and create more affordable housing for the broad population. Seeing from the state level, my question is how safe the financial system is in China. China's financial system has a lot of margin still to address any shocks it may hit, so we are not in an imminent risk of crisis. Nevertheless, credit in the economy has been growing very fast in recent years, so there have been risks and vulnerabilities building up. So one of the priorities of the financial sector reforms is to reduce those risks, to slow down the growth in credit, especially of the new forms of lending in wealth management products, trust loans, which have been booming in recent years. So the government is right in trying to slow down this momentum in the non-traditional lending particularly. At the same time, it's important that the financial sector contribute to the transition of the economy to a new growth path, more consumer-based, more based on small and medium-sized enterprises, and financial sector reform will do that if we liberalize the system more, if we give more role to market forces. What I really want to know is that the housing price is so high and people are talking about bubbles in the economy. How to address this issue to ensure smooth and steady growth of the economy? We do not see big bubbles in the Chinese economy in the sense of bubbles that are about to burst. However, we do see growing imbalances that need to be addressed and need to be corrected. In fact, the government does have a strategy to shift the economy more from a very heavy investment-led growth pattern to an economy that is more reliant on consumption, on the production of medium and small-sized enterprises, who produce products that can be produ uh, consumed by a larger part of the society. And therefore, this is also going to be a growth path that is more sustainable, that is more environmentally friendly, and that is also more inclusive because it will benefit a larger part of the population. Advanced economies are doing a better job in providing social security. How can China improve in this area? Should more money be channeled into the market or into building a social safety net? China has made tremendous progress in recent years in strengthening its social security system. Health coverage has widened enormously, the pension system has improved. Nevertheless, there is room to go a lot further and improve more. For example, in the health area, the actual amount of the benefits can go higher, co-payments can be reduced. In the pension system, we can improve portability of the pensions between different jobs and provinces. So there is a lot of room for doing more. However, one cannot have an advanced economy system in an economy that is still developing. So we need to make sure that the reforms are balanced, are fiscally sustainable, so that we have the resources to also pay out the benefits accordingly. So continuing along this path, improving the system in a fiscally sustainable way is indeed part of the agenda of making the economy more inclusive, spreading the benefits more widely into the population.